About five years ago, I was that aid worker Barbie. Um, I had done everything right. I'd got away from my God-forsaken, embarrassing city, Birmingham, and I'd made it to the bright lights of London, and I'd studied really, really hard, and I'd got a job in a big charitable foundation, helping make a difference to lots and lots of people all around the world having a really difficult time. Or so I thought. There was lots of pictures of me in Sierra Leone, uh, in India, in lots of exciting places, making a difference and really helping people. Now, there's no doubt that there's incredible work happening in international development, and people are doing fantastic things to help the lives of those in the poorest parts of the world improve. But I had a feeling that I wasn't one of them. I had a feeling that my experience that uh, was not particularly indigenous or from the place, and my view of the world was not particularly the right way to approach uh, helping people to change their lives. And so one day in November 2011, I saw this tweet. And I was pretty excited because I was very uh, cynical about Birmingham. It was not very exciting. It was definitely not like London. And they didn't even have a single TEDx event at that time, even though there was 10 growing around London. So I thought, OK, I'm going to go and find out what's going on. I met up with a small group of people in a coffee shop in um, Birmingham city centre and was listening to them talk about, we need to get the voices of Birmingham onto the stage. We need to do a TEDx. We need to make something happen. And I was a little bit cynical. And lots of people kind of laughed at our idea on Twitter and in person to be like, no one in Birmingham is going to be interested in this. But we got going. So I joined the team. There was four of us, rapidly growing. Uh, and we started TEDx. TEDx Birmingham. TEDx Brum, for those of you who don't know that to be the nickname. And in 2012, there was more than 100 people who turned up to our first little event in an arts center in the middle of a park in the city center. And suddenly, all around me, I was surrounded by people fiercely passionate about the city, talking about what was happening there, so, unraveling so many stories about its incredible possibility, and really, really caring about wanting to make Birmingham a better place. And my eyes were opened this dark, dingy, embarrassing city that all of my cousins had taken the uh, proverbial out of me in the, over the years, was suddenly this really exciting place to be. And at the same time, I started to realize that there were real problems at home. 40% of the children under five in our city were living in child poverty. Thousands of people queued up every week in food banks just to make ends meet. And things were suddenly starting to join together. Maybe my focus could be much more worthwhile at home. And so that was a good year, and we thought, OK, let's do it again. And in 2013, 350 people turned up. And this was pretty awesome. And it was getting more and more exciting, and it was a, like a little microcosm of what you guys are seeing today. But after two years of working really hard as volunteers, and giving so much time to it and creating these incredible days where people are inspired and excited and really passionate about what they could do. They'd go home, the next day they'd have that sort of TEDx hangover, so excited, it's gonna change the world. About a week later, it'd be like, remember that event? About a month later, it'd be like, remember TEDx? It was really great. And before you knew it, you were back in the grind of uh, your everyday life. And you made tiny changes, but there was certainly not 40% of children in Birmingham in child poverty suddenly solved because a group of people had come together and gone, woo, let's do something. So that's when uh, I wrote a blog, which was, what if TEDx Brum was every day? What if the spirit of hope, inspiration, action, and the excitement that you feel and the ideas that you feel was every day? And the first thing my team said was, uh, yeah, we'd probably all die if TEDx was every day. And I was like, I don't, I don't mean that. I mean, what if TEDx could be something more than just a one-day event where we all get together and go, wow, we can make the world a better place and then go home. And suddenly, people started to respond to this um, blog. People were really excited. So we just started to bring people together in all sorts of different places. And uh, in coffee shops, around pizza, anyone who'd give us a free place, we started to ask, well, what would this look like if we did something more? All sorts of different ideas started to come about. 
And I realized that actually it wasn't just us thinking this. There was a global movement happening in hundreds of cities across the world within a network called the Impact Hub Network, but also in many, many other spaces. Citizens were coming together and saying, we want to make a difference in our place. So I started to research this a little bit more and find out what this was all about. And I came across the Impact Hub Network and realized that it had been growing in more than 80 cities. Groups of people from their places were coming together and saying, we want to make a difference here. It's not OK that people are queuing up for food banks. It's not OK that the gap between the rich and the poor is getting bigger and bigger. It's not OK that business is putting profit before purpose. We want to do something about this. And so we started to look about what an Impact Hub might look like for Birmingham. What would it be about? We had a whole year of just gathering uh, ideas, thousands of post-its, uh, pop-up spaces, loads of tweets. We had 2,500 uh, followers on our Twitter account before we even had a space or anything like that. We had this pop-up space that you can see at the middle of the bottom slide that was just wooden chairs, trestle tables, and tops. And we were just bringing people together saying, how would you make Birmingham a better place to be? What does it mean to you? What does change look like? And then we did the thing that taught us the most. We started to go around and ask people for space. Look at all these empty buildings everywhere. Why aren't they being used for something useful? Look at that space over there. Could we borrow it for a year and make something happen? Look at these incredible things that are happening in the Impact Hub network. It's all over the world. There's four in London. Surely, Birmingham, you would like one in your city. And the adults, one by one, laughed us out of the room. That won't work here. They're there, Remy. It's a really great idea, but 2,500 people on a Twitter account doesn't mean anything. Little did they know. <laughs> They're there, Remy. I know that building is sitting there empty and probably will for the next five years, but it makes more sense for us just to keep it than give it to you to do something useful. So we started to realize that it was not going to be an easy journey. We went to everyone you could possibly uh, think about to try and find out how to do this. We got an amazing collaboration where someone offered us a too-good-to-be-true space and then ripped it away from us when we'd done it all up. So things weren't looking good. So we decided to take matters into our own hands. To all those people who told me 2,500 people on a Twitter account for an idea was nothing, we were like, we're going to take this back. So we went and raised £50,000 between all of our team and everyone we could beg and borrow it from, and got the lease of a space. And then we decided, we think people really support this idea. So two years ago, we launched a crowdfunder on a platform called Kickstarter. And in short, in 30 days, we raised 65,000 pounds from more than 600 backers, and our campaign, hashtag Epic Brum, as it was called at the time, went viral. Everyone who'd laughed at us by the end of it was throwing money into it. And by the end of the campaign, one of the funders who said, there, there, Imi, great idea, but I don't think you and your team can actually make this happen, said, here's another 50,000 pounds, go make it happen. And so we did. We had 110,000 pounds after two years of begging, borrowing, and stealing, and went from zero uh, to 110,000 pounds to make this space happen. Then the builders came in and told us it's going to cost £250,000 to make this happen. Ah, bit of a problem. But it was OK because we had a huge community. We had a huge amount of people who had put money into our idea. And they came. And using incredible technology, we printed our furniture at a CNC cutter down the road, took it in a little van about a mile down the road, unpacked it, and built and created the whole space together. So today, Impact Hub Birmingham exists the first one in outside of London, and one of more than, a, more than 80 different spaces and communities across the world. We have a workspace, an event space, an incredible group of change makers, and a space where we start to work on some of our big, serious challenges. So we really believed that one of the first things we needed was a place where people who dream big dreams about the places where they are from can come together, and someone won't laugh them out of the room. And that's just the start. We started to do all sorts of different things. Our opening festival had more than 500 people attend. Ideas about making your own um, printed houses, spaces in which we can think about the issues of childcare 
uh, yearly festivals where hundreds of people were turning up to come and make their ideas about their city known started to happen from the Impact Hub. And this was all driven by people. People like me in their suede were joining. But actually, it's really important because a lot of people said to me, this is very nice. This is very nice to me. Lots of nice little things are happening, but this isn't serious. But actually, it was just in our first year, and this is from six months ago, these stats, we had more than 750 people attend our opening. We'd raised 65,000 pounds from a Kickstarter and 110 overall. We had more than 150 members now, many of these award-winning. We'd hosted over 300 events. We had more than 4,000 people attend these events. We'd been working across a number of different spaces with the city council, with the police, with universities, with a Nobel Prize winner, with a Nobel Prize nominee, with a Hollywood actor. This wasn't just a bunch of kids sitting in a room, big, dreaming big dreams. This was serious. We were making people listen in our city about what we cared about. And so, what does this all mean? Why am I telling you about this? Because actually, there's a lot of things that I've learned over the last five years that I wish I'd known 15 years ago. That might tell you a little bit about how old I actually am. And these are some of the key messages that I just want to share and say take home today if they feel relevant. I think one of the most important things that we've needed to do is focus what we're doing on Birmingham and its change. I don't want to talk about the impact of a lot. I don't want to talk about me a lot. I don't want to talk about what it is that we're building. I want to know about what we're doing to make the place that we're from better for everyone there. So I think it's really important to focus more on what you're working towards than who gets the credit. Naturally, when great things are happening, lots and lots of people get that credit. Believe in your vision. I often had a lot of people tell me that I needed to go and learn from somebody else. I needed somebody else to give me validation over my idea. We needed someone else to tell us that this was possible. And actually, I think what the world needs more of is uncensored vision. Your wildest dreams, the dreams that are going to take us to the stars, the ones that you believe deep down. Yes, go and listen to other people, learn from those who've done incredible things, but please don't let anyone censor you before you've had a chance to even test what's burning deep down inside of you. Take responsibility for your place. What's happened recently in America kind of can tell you that nobody else is going to do it for you. I spent years being embarrassed of the place that I was from. And actually, if I'd taken a moment to look around and see what opportunity was, there was and what space there was to really make a tangible difference to the people living in my city, I think I would have spent a lot less time traveling around being aid worker Barbie and a lot more time getting my head down and making something incredible happen. Build and create your ideas together. There is no single hero. And me standing up here is the worst thing for you to learn. Because I'm telling you this story about this incredible place with hundreds of people, with thousands of people supporting it. And I'm standing up here, and you can see Imi Kaur, the founder of Impact Hub Birmingham, and you all think, I want to be like her. Actually, all I've ever done, oh, well, maybe you're thinking you want to be like me, or maybe you're thinking, uh, this is a bit awkward. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe one or two of you are thinking I might want to do something. But anyway, my point is, is there is no single hero. What I think I have done really well, and I'm happy to, to, to say this, is bring lots and lots of people together, keep big teams together, keep us focused on a big picture and about changing our city and what's possible. But I can guarantee you that none of this would have happened without hundreds of people, thousands of people, and none of this would happen on a day-to-day -day basis without the huge team, who many of you will meet later on today because they're all here, or lots of them are here, actually doing the small actions every day to take this forward. So don't ever believe in the single hero, and don't ever let anybody tell you that there are these single heroes that make this stuff happen, and that's how we make change. Behind every single one of them is an army of incredible people helping to drive it forward. And yes, some people can bring those people together, but actually, it's really about all of us bringing our ideas together and working together. Build with integrity. Your values are the foundation. If you start off with any project or any idea with a team that looks nothing like the city you're from, nothing like the demographic that you're from, nothing like the issues in the city, you won't suddenly find these people later and be like, come join my project. It's not about being politically cor correct. 
It's not about having one person from the right color and the right religion in your team. It's about genuinely knowing each other. It's about genuinely having the empathy to understand the experiences of those different from you and bringing them right into the core of driving your projects. So don't look at politically correct diversity numbers. Look at what is my city made of? What is my place made of? What are the issues? And are those people with me at the beginning? And if they're not, maybe I need to take some time to take a step back and look at who I'm hanging around with or who I'm building my project with and actually go and find those and work with those who really uh, represent what you're trying to do. Challenge what you're hearing. If there's one message that I would talk about taking away today, challenge everything you're hearing. People keep talking about this post-truth era that we're in. It's basically people are lying to us. The mass media are lying to us. Social media is telling us a story about the world that is not necessarily true. Challenge everything you're hearing. Challenge me. Challenge everything you're hearing in the speakers today. Daring to disagree is not something that is a negative uh, uh, trait, in my opinion. Take, disagreeing with someone takes a lot of time and energy and actually is, in some ways, an act of love. To say, hey, I want to take the time to say, I'm not sure I agree with you. Learning to have these conversations at a time where we're going through some difficult times is going to be a really, really important skill and get comfortable with saying the things that feel uncomfortable. Don't hide away from it. Don't shy away from it. Don't say, I don't want to rock the boat. Rock the boat. Do it with love, care, and empathy, but rock the frickin' boat. Doing this work is not going to be quick. Some of the challenges that we have are huge. And I have really had to learn this because school did not teach me this. This is messy, long, and complex work. It isn't, you're not going to know what's going to happen tomorrow or what the journey ahead is. This is about discovery, being comfortable with the fact that I don't know, but we need to build this together. There won't be a simple solution. There isn't just a do the food waste. Um, solve that challenge or translate all the work or build a hub. These are not going to be the only things, but we are going to have to have the audacity and the patience to do the difficult thing and actually figure out how we go to the next space and a place where we can really be proud of the world that we're creating for our children. Now, this all sounds pretty miserable. How the hell are we going to do it? I mean, this sounds like you're saying the world is screwed. No, it's not. We're in one of the peaceful, most peaceful times in history. Things have really improved. However, we have gone through massive times of uncertainty before. After the World War, we rebuilt Europe. Somebody, or a massive group of people, came together and built things like the NHS. It is possible for us to come together and recreate a world that we're really proud of, but it's going to take all of us. So the one thing I want to leave you with today is, what if TEDx was every day? What if the spirit of inspiration, hope, collaboration, and the challenging, inspiring ideas you're going to hear today is not something that you just take home today and think that was cool, and you look at us and go, they're cool. Actually, think all day about what am I going to do with this, who am I going to bring together, and what am I going to start doing tomorrow? There isn't an us and them. There is no other people that are going to sort this out anymore. It's just us all of us, and we really need to come together and make this happen. So I hope today is the beginning of an incredible journey for you, and one in five years' time where you're telling us about what's happening in Bath and how you've solved some of the biggest challenges that you, this city and this world is facing. Thank you so much, and lots of my team will be here at lunchtime, so I really look forward to hearing and talking to you more. Thank you.